Emerald Rogue was a great game, and when I heard about Emerald Rogue 2.0 on the 1st of July, I was ecstatic. The game looked so great, and I started playing the second I saw it. I started the game and chose to play as Lyra. Something new about this game is that you can choose which sprite you want to use, as well as the colors and the skin tone. I chose average difficulty as well as having Pokemon from all 9 generations. I land in Mr. Tam's area, and Elm tells me to take a look around. I ignore him though, and head straight for his lab to use my Pokemon. He starts talking before he is interrupted and whisked away, without giving me a Pokemon. I follow him to an area like the Safari Zone, and there are three Pokemon scattered throughout the grass. Capsicum, Litwick, and Roly Coley. I chose Litwick, and we head into our first adventure. The adventure system is extremely similar to the first game. There are paths, with three stops on each path. I can choose which path I go on, and some of the paths are combined together. I choose the Calm and Course area. The Calm prefix means lots of Pokemon, but few items and trainers. The Course suffix means the type of Pokemon I will see there. I'm not sure, because I caught five water-adjacent Pokemon, being Stunfisk, Shellos, Panpour, Tatsugiri, and Bastille and Redstripe. I grab a plethora of items and leave for the next area on my path. Instead of encounters, the two paths combine and give me the choice between a battle prep area and a game show. So I choose the game show. I learn it's different from the last game, and I get to play the mini games from the main series game. I play Voltorb Flip. Personally, I thought I was a Voltorb Flip master, doing the first game with E, but I quickly learned I was not, losing the second almost instantly. At the end of the show, Silver was blocking my exit. Another new thing about this game is that there's a rival. At first it's Chincho, so I switched to Stunfisk. We go blow for blow, but I forget I'm slower and get taken out, losing Stunfisk forever. Emerald Rogue forced me to play a pseudo Nuzlocke, having Pokemon permanently die, but you can still catch multiple Pokemon per route. Either way, I lose Stunfisk and send out Basculin to kill. At next is Horsey, and I narrowly take it out with Basculin, surviving on 3 HP. The final area I choose to go to on my path was a tough, breezy area that had Pidubs and Bellsprouts. I catch a Bellsprout and Pidub, releasing my Panpour, for leaving and challenging the random gin trainer at the end of the path. It turned out to be Chuck, the fighting type gym leader. He leads to the Tyrogue, which I kill in two shots with Litwick. Out next is Paldea and Tauros, which is very scary. I play the switching game and end up losing Pidub, Litwick, and Shellos. I finish Tauros with Basculin, and his final Pokemon is Mankey, which I kill with two water guns. Something I had noticed at this point in the game was that it was very hard to look at. The menus were just straining my eyes, and I felt very disconnected from the game in a weird way. I ignored this feeling and continued on, heading into the tough Corrosive route, which only had two Pokemon. I catch two Venipedes and two Rockruffs, somehow managing to kill Basculin through the KO. Another thing that changed in this game was that they added the move reminder to the menu, allowing me to choose what moves my Pokemon learn at all times. It also made evolving optional, but shows a little symbol next to the Pokemon when they are ready to evolve. I evolved all of my Pokemon and head into one of this game's new areas, the Mysterious Side. In there, I can talk to someone to learn the typing of the next random gym leader, and also pay for info like their lead Pokemon and strongest Pokemon. I learn that the gym leader is an Ice-type gym leader and leave the area. I enter the Average Chili area and immediately run out of balls trying to catch a snarl. I get nothing in this area, and we head into our second gym, leading with Life and Rock. I kill the lead Sneasel with two reversals, and one-shot the incoming Delibird with a Rock Tomb, and kill his final Swine Up with two Rock Tombs. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and go into my third gym battle against Claire. My team going in is Lycanroc, Pilloswine, Scolipede, Kadabra, Helioptile, and Rampa. I lead Rampa while she leads Dano. I take it out in one Dragon Pulse, and in comes Altaria. She instantly puts me to sleep, but I'm too stubborn to switch and spam Dragon Pulse, but I only get one shot in before dying, just short of a knockout. I tend to pill us fine to use Ice Shard, and now next comes Tatsugiri. I use one Ice Shard before getting KO'd by a Water Pulse. I send out Kadabra to kill the Tatsugiri in two hits, and out fourth comes Vibrava. I do about half of its health before it goes down, make the greatest misplay you have ever seen, and send out Helioptile. I then try to use an electric move, which obviously fails, so I send out Scallopede. I get it down to a sliver before being Dragon Tail out into Helioptile and take the KO with a quick attack. I catch Tinkaton in the next area before wiping to my rival. The game is fun, but outside of the battles, it's too visually hard to play. It may just be me, but I feel the first game's graphics were much better because they were visually more simple. I'm not sure, the game came out very recently and I may change my opinion, but let me know what you think and subscribe for more.